Hello, Dog Lover. My name is Sarah. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog. Welcome to the live show. Welcome to the channel. If it's your first time, uh, welcome. And if you have been here before and you know about the channel, thank you for being here again. And if you want to learn more about dogs, dog training, how to train dogs without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, force, or domination. This is the channel that we're going to focus on those and we're going to learn how to train our dogs without the use of treats or food and even without the use of any tools or aversive tools or uh, domination or even force. Uh, in this video, in this live video, mainly I'm going to talk uh, why your dog doesn't listen to you. Whether you're have, you have a puppy or adult dog, why is it that your puppy or your adult dog doesn't listen to you? I'm just gonna quickly check to see if everything is working uh, okay. And if we are live, and yes, we are. It looks like uh, everything is working. Um, all right, okay. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat line. I'm going to answer them live. And we're going to go through understanding uh, why is it that your dog doesn't listen to you. There are many reasons why dogs don't listen to us. I'm going to go through them and I'm going to explain them. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention before we get started on this live uh, broadcast is that um, I am uh, making some changes in my um, online course, online dog training course. Um, at the moment, it is closed and it will be open uh, very soon. I'm updating the, the course, um, transferring the platform to a new platform, which is going to run better and it's going to be working better for me and for you. So I'm going to be making those changes pretty soon. Uh, so at the moment, the online course is closed, unfortunately. But if you want to uh, learn more and if you want to know when it will reopen and when you can register and all that, de all those details, you can join my my private group, Facebook group, uh, to learn more. And there I share a lot of information, plus free tips and tricks and um, all kinds of uh, information, including all the information about the online course. So if you want to learn more, uh, you can learn, uh, get the link to this uh, private Facebook group in the description area. So let's get started. And as I said, feel free if you have any questions to ask your questions in the chat line and I will answer them uh, live right away. If you have trouble listening to me or seeing me, please let me know in the chat line as well. Uh, otherwise, let's get started. So I'm going to start first with puppies. Why is it that your puppy doesn't listen to you? Uh, you know, many of my clients, many of my students, many dog owners that I see here and there, uh, they tell me, oh, their dog doesn't listen to them. Their puppy is uh, just ignorant. It's just too heavy-headed, um, doesn't want to listen. It's just hard to get them to listen when something else is happening. So that's number one. When there are more distractions higher than what normally happens to your puppy, that's number one. Distractions are the reason why your dog doesn't listen to you, why your puppy doesn't listen to you. Most of these reasons are related to both puppies and dogs. So in a way, I'm going to diagnose uh, the puppies first, and then we're going to uh, work on the adult dogs. So first of all, the reason number one reason why puppies don't listen to us is because uh, they're not focused. They are, they are distracted with everything that is happening around them. They're new in with life in general. They're, everything is new, everything is fresh, everything is uh, in a way 
um, pure. So for them to focus on one thing is very hard. Uh, to focus uh, on especially things that they are not familiar with, that includes you, what you're asking them to do and all those things, it's really hard for them to focus on uh, those stuff. So it's really hard for a puppy, first of all, to focus. To, that's one reason. And the reason that happens is because, you know, everything is new, everything is fresh, everything is, um, as I said, uh, in, in form of new experience. Uh, so they can't focus on one thing. They're learning everything. They're learning every single thing that is happening um, in, in, in around them. So they, they can't focus on one thing. So let me just close this. I think the window is reflecting the light and I'm not getting a good um, I think I'm getting a clearer there, so I think it's better. Okay, so everything for them is new, so everything is um, is in a way for them they can't focus on things yet. It will happen in near future, but at the moment they can't focus on things. Um, Plus, number two reason why puppies don't listen, because they don't have that connection with you yet. They're, they are not bonded with you yet. Even though in your mind and in your soul, you're saying, you know, I went and I got this puppy, whether you paid for it or you adopted this puppy or however you got this puppy. In your mind, in your soul, you think this puppy is yours, but in reality the puppy is not yours yet you are not the puppy's uh, person yet that's because it takes time for a puppy to bond and connect with the human uh, with an individual it takes time because puppies and puppies in particular they they are, as I said, they are still learning to learn. They're st still learning new experiences. So they don't have that connection with the, with the outside world. And you are one of those individuals, one of those things that is in the outside world. So they can't connect with you right away. It will take them some time to connect with in any human being, any individual. It's, just, it's not very personal. It's just that. that that's reality of life. Puppies, it, it takes them a long time to connect and bond with any individual. So usually I say it takes about six months for a puppy to connect with a human, and then takes another six months, uh, up to a year, for you to get results. So uh, the first six months, you're just getting to know each other. You're, you're getting to know your puppy, your puppy is getting to know you, uh, and then after six months, you can kind of start seeing some results out of the connection that you have made with your dog, the puppy, with your, the bond that you have built. If you can see, get, if you can start getting results, that would be because you have built that bond. If you see that you're still not getting results, including that your puppy is not listening to you, that means you don't have a strong bond uh, built yet with your puppy. So you want to work on building a uh, stronger uh, connection, stronger bond with your dog, which I'm going to explain how, you, how to do that. The other thing about uh, puppies not listening to you is because humans, the dog owner, uh, they have high expectations. They expect that the puppy to listen, to do everything perfectly, especially in the first few months. When you have a puppy, as I said, the puppy doesn't know anything, uh, doesn't know anything about life, doesn't know you, hasn't been connected with you, hasn't had any bond with you. So therefore, you, they don't know any, they haven't done, you haven't done any training, any Maybe you have done training, but you haven't done proper training with your puppy. 
So you, you shouldn't have any expectations. Your expectations should be very low. In a way, you shouldn't have any at all. Because as I said, you're still building that relationship with your puppy. You're building a connection with your puppy. So as the time goes by, you can start, uh, <clears throat> if you feel like you have done your part, you have made some connections with your puppy, you have been able to invest time to individually train your puppy, all these things. If you have done all these things, Things, then you should have a little bit of expectations, but not much. Just a tiny bit of expectations uh, until your puppy is mature enough to understand exactly what is going on. The, one of the things that you also have to remember when you're, you have a puppy, puppies up to about six months, they're still, six to eight months, they're still growing, they're still uh, building, um, you know, their vision, they're, they're developing their uh, uh, eyesight, they're developing their ears, you know, their ears, the hearing is developing, uh, their sense, sense of scent is developing, all these things are still developing, their brain is still developing, so they can't, they, they're not fully developed up to eight months of age. Uh, and the rest happens up after that. So up to there, so that should be the main reason actually. And you should uh, you should understand this in a way that your puppy is not fully developed. So they can't really understand what you're saying or what you're doing. It's like having kids or babies and you expect a toddler uh, to understand you understand exactly what you're saying uh, what you mean uh, so you shouldn't have an expect you should you shouldn't have and you don't have expectations for any baby uh, a, mo a year even two years of age maybe even three to five years of age you are not uh, almost you're not having any expectations you're just taking care of your baby puppies they grow faster than human babies uh, but they take but eight months and then the, they, they develop physical physically and mentally and emotionally after that up to a year so in the beginning when your puppy is not listening to you what you want to do is start understanding that okay this is not puppy's fault the puppy for, his, for instance if your puppy is biting you is jumping on you and is uh, chewing on stuff uh, they're not doing it to piss you off. They're not to, doing it to make your life miserable. They're just doing it because they don't know anything else. And if you see that you are asking your puppy to stop a behavior and your puppy doesn't stop, first of all, again, you understand that they don't know anything is, else. Uh, they know what to do in their small tiny mind they know what to do at that moment to go and chew for instance or jump but they don't know that it's the wrong thing or the right thing for them everything is positive everything is right right everything is correct everything is pure in their mind they don't have any negative uh, information so therefore everything that they do is based on instinct so if they're chewing or jumping or biting you, it's based on, based on instincts. And they're doing that to, um, to satisfy their personal life. Uh, they still don't know that it's a wrong thing or a right thing. So if you want to start teaching your puppy to stop biting and stop doing things that is right or wrong, uh, and to learn those, you have to start developing first of all a bond a connection with your puppy for your puppy to start uh, listening to you understanding to you that oh this human is actually taking care of me i'm part of their lives uh, i am part of their uh, group um, if a family is uh, taking care of a puppy the puppy slowly will start connecting with you it doesn't happen overnight as I said, it takes about six months. 
So during these six months, what you are doing, you're just teaching the dog that you are, the puppy is part of your family, the puppy is part of your group, uh, your puppy is, has to start taking cues from you, your expectations should be low, you have to repeat everything that you're asking or telling your puppy thousands of times. Literally, you have to repeat thousands of times. It's not that puppies learn within a, once or twice repetitions. You have to do thousands of repetitions of each command, each thing that you're teaching to your puppy has to be repeated thousands of times for them to register. It's not that they're slow learner, it's not that they're dumb, or it's not that they're stupid or they don't understand these things. You have to understand and you have to figure out and uh, accept the fact and put yourself in their shoes that they're dogs, they're animals, <clears throat> they're different creatures than we are, and they are um, learning from humans. So it takes time for puppies to understand exactly what we mean when we say stop it, when we say don't do this, don't do that. It takes a long time for them to understand what this meaning of these things are. And you have to repeat this thousands of times. Let's say if I want my puppy to stop biting my hand, uh, I would say, Robert, no. And I'll replace it with a, a chew toy, for instance, right? Uh, and then puppy is going to chew on the toy for 10, 10 seconds. It's going to come back to my hand again. So I'll say, puppy or Robert, no. And then replace it with a chew toy. So this, this action, this interaction has to repeat thousands of times for the puppy to register to understand that, oh, this human who I have no idea who, who he is, it just feeds me and takes care of me, um, is I'm biting his hand and is saying, uh, don't touch my hand, instead touch the chew, chew toy, for instance. So it will take some time, thousands of repetitions for the puppy to understand this concept, understand this interaction. Uh, it will take some time for the puppy to figure out that that's what you're trying to communicate. That's what you're trying to teach. So this is why many puppy owners, they get frustrated because they see that the pu puppy is not learning, is not registering, is not listening to them, is not paying attention to them, is not, um, is not getting or is not stopping that bad behavior. They want to have a perfect puppy within a week or a month. It doesn't happen. The reality is having a puppy is a almost a year long work. It's a lot of you know interaction with the puppy, a lot of cleaning up messes. Um, you have to be. Um, uh, proactive, you have to be creating an environment uh, uh, that is <clears throat> puppy proof. You have to be creating an environment that is safe for the puppy. You have to create uh, a routine for the puppy to start learning and having that opportunity to interact with other individuals, other games and toys. Uh, other dogs, other puppies, other humans. Um, you have to give all these uh, opportunities and you have to go through all these steps in order for your puppy to learn. It doesn't happen overnight. So one thing that I want you to learn is, first of all, don't have expectations. Second of all, Focus on repeating a command or a behavior thousands of times until you get results. And that will take um, a month, two, three, four, five, six months. It will take as long as it needs to take. 
your puppy as an individual, it needs enough time to process this information. Plus, it, it's a, it is matter of how long and how well are you going to be giving information, interacting with your puppy. How how well are you going? Uh, how, how well are you going to transfer this information? How much are you going to invest? Are you going to invest uh, training and working and interacting with your puppy an hour a day or 10 hours a day? Depends on all this. Um, as a as a, a responsible dog owner, puppy owner myself, I will spend 24 hours uh, interacting with my puppy and focusing on my puppy for the first six months every day. Not that doesn't doesn't mean that I quit working, but I plan around having my work and a puppy. So, for instance, if I'm a single parent, single person, single individual, doggy parent, single individual, and I want to have a puppy, but I work every day, Monday to Friday, and um, I work from 7 a.m. till 4 p.m., 5 p.m., that's not enough time for me to there is no enough, not enough time for me to invest on my puppy. It, it's just not re realistic to have a puppy at that that kind of lifestyle. Because you know, in the morning I'm rushing to get ready to go to work. I can't take care of puppy. I have to take care of myself. And then when I come home, I'm rushing to take care of myself again, have dinner and this and that. And then I want to have my social life. I want to have this and that, unless. I want to give up on a few things, but still, there is eight to ten hours of the day that I can't pay attention to my dog, puppy. You know, I'm at work. What my, what is my puppy going to do during this eight to ten hours? If it's going to be in some other people's care, let's say a, a doggy daycare, or um, I'm going to let my parents take care of the puppy then I'm not interacting with the puppy. My parents are interacting with my puppy. And I'm just sidelined, just taking, paying the bills and taking, you know, taking care of that part of the owning the puppy. So that's what I want you to also understand. Realistically, how much time can you invest uh, in puppy? In, realistically, if you have a family uh, that is involved with the puppy, that's even that's better because you know you you everybody of every member of the family can um, uh, invest in some part of a puppy's life, and everybody can kind of connect with the puppy because they are there uh, individually throughout the day, somewhat. But if you are going to have a puppy and you're a family and only one person wants to take care of that puppy. Again, it's not realistic. So you have to understand this. You have to collect, co calculate all these uh, facts and um, bring them all together and realistically figure out how much time and how much effort can you invest in training your puppy and spending and investing in your puppy. Um, now, the last thing about the puppy is why they don't listen to you is because um, puppies need training. They need a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one training. And you have to train them in a way that they learn what you want them to do. And the only way that you can teach them what to do and what not to do is creating a communication between you and your puppy. Uh, you, you can't really talk to your puppy. You can have a conversation with your puppy. So what we do is, as a human being, we create these little simple words which mean something, which means uh, sit, stay, calm, uh, stop, no, um, uh, heal, uh, 
walk nicely, things like this, simple words. We create these simple words and we teach these to the puppy. So the puppy starts learning that uh, I am I'm supposed to understand what these words mean. So you focus on those words, those few words, not sentences, but words, simple words, sit, come. Your dog's name, you have to teach your dog, your puppy, your puppy's name. You have to teach come, no, yes, good boy, good girl. It's just simple words you start teaching your puppy. And that takes time to for the puppy also to learn. And then you're going to get results because now you have a communication system between you and your puppy. And that takes about six months for the puppy to learn. So once your puppy learns, then you can start expecting some results. Not a lot, whole lot, but some results. So focus on training your puppy as well. So that's that's basically why is it that the dog, your puppy doesn't listen to you. The, the main reason is because you have to invest time. And most puppy owners, they don't invest enough time. Uh, and um, the last thing about, again, puppies, and this applies to adult dogs as well, you want to focus on providing your puppies daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and also affection. So exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. Five daily needs of your puppy. So if you provide enough exercise for your puppy, your puppy is going to be more stimulated, healthy stimulation, uh, enough stimulation physically, and then training is going to be mental stimulation, socialization is going to have to get some socialization every day, you know, with new objects, new people, new dogs, new smells, new sounds, new environments. That's a mental stimulation as well. And then it's going to get proper care, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, brushing, um, good bed, good colors, good care. And then also you're going to share affection with your puppy. So this will create a perfect uh, situation for your puppy to have uh, in order for the puppy to listen to you and be part of you. This will also accelerate the bonding process, the communication process. So you want to focus on exercise, which is mainly uh, physical, uh, training and socialization. These are mental. So 70% mental, 30% physical, uh, and then care and affection. These are emotional, okay? So physical, mental, uh, emotional. Those three parts, if you provide every day with your dog, with your puppy, you see that you're going to be bonding faster. You're going to have a healthier relationship, and your puppy is slowly going to start to listen to you. So that's the part about puppies. Now let's transfer to adult dogs. So why is it that my adult dog doesn't listen to me? Even though I've done all these things with my puppy training and all that, why is it that my dog doesn't listen to you, right? Why is it the dog doesn't listen to me? Again, one of the main reasons dogs don't listen to their owners is because literally they don't understand what you mean. <laughs> literally, they, they, they don't know what you actually are asking. You know, in our mind, we're saying, you know, my dog, I'm feeding my dog, I'm taking care of my dog, I'm you know, caring for my dog. So my dog should be listening to me. But, you know, all these things that you you give, you provide for your dog, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that your dog should be listening to you. That just means that your dog is just um, being taken care of. Uh, and again, you know, when you, we focus on ex providing the daily five essential needs, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection, uh, most people, most dog owners, they 
provide a lot of affection and care. Uh, and maybe a little bit of socialization, not much of training, and maybe a, a kind of a wrong way of, of exercising the dog. So if you do it in a way that it's not making sense to the dog and it's not in proper order, obviously your dog doesn't have that connection with you, doesn't have that ability to commu communicate to you or you can't communicate to your dog. So therefore, you don't get results. That's basically, it's because uh, lack of communication, you know, uh, not a clear communication. A dog, you have to understand that has been bred and designed by humans for humans. That means we, we, we dogs want to please us. You know this, dogs, plan is not to ruin your life. Dog's plan is not to make your dog in life miserable. A dog's plan is to please you, to make you happy, to make you feel good. And whatever they're doing is not because they're doing because they're planning, they're saying, you know what, I'm not going to listen to my dog owner just to piss him off or piss her off. They don't have that ideology in their mind. They're not listening to you because they want to make you feel bad. They're listen, not listening to you because simply they don't know that they're not listening to you. They don't know that. The, one of the problems is that we humanize a dog when it comes to uh, situations like this. What that means is we think that the, the dog is doing certain things because humans do the same thing too. You know, a, wife or a husband won't listen to his husband or wife just to piss them off most of the time, right? Uh, but most of also we don't listen or don't pay attention to our significant other is because we are we are busy with other stuff. You know, we're thinking, uh, we have other logics in our minds. We don't listen or we don't pay attention or we ignore what our significant other is telling us. But in general, we're not doing it to piss them off either, right? A wife or a husband doesn't do that kind of thing to piss their husband or wife off. It's just we do it, right? And that is something that we uh, kind of get used to it. And it's a human behavior. It's something that humans do. But when it comes to animals and especially dogs, they don't think that way. They don't do it because they want to piss you off. They just simply don't understand that concept. They don't, they, don't, they don't know that concept from animals' point of view. Uh, so simply, they don't know what you're saying. So when you're saying, Rover, come, and Rover doesn't come, it doesn't mean that they're ignorant, doesn't mean that they're heavy-headed, doesn't mean that they are ignoring you. It doesn't mean that they are hating you and they're doing that to piss you off so you can chase them and catch them. They're not doing that because of those. They're doing it because simply they don't know what calm means. That's simple. So for instance, um, the other day I had computer problem, right? and I didn't know what was going on. And I contacted a, an IT person, right? And I asked them, you know, this, this problem with it. And they said, you should be logging off. So I didn't know what meant it meant logging off. So I meant I just have to, you know, sign out. But logging off apparently means many other stuff too. So in my mind, I had no idea what it meant. So I did the wrong thing. I just logged out and I lost connection with the <laughs> IT person, right? So that's what happens with the dog. When you tell them to come, they log off accidentally, for instance, right? They don't know what, what you meant. They do whatever they think is the right thing. I thought logging off meant to sign out, it meant like, you know, I had to turn off my laptop, turn on back again, and do this and that, that. So 
that's that's an example, right? So when you're telling a dog that um, do this and do that, and they don't do it, they don't listen to you, they have you have a hard time getting results from your dog or your puppy. Uh, it's simply they don't know what it means. So you want to make sure, for example, when you're asking your dog to come, let's say you're in, at the park and your dog is running around, having a good time, uh, playing with other dogs, uh, grabbing a stick and running around and doing this and that. Then all of a sudden you say, Rover, come. And Rover doesn't come and ignores you. And you keep yelling at your dog, Rover, come. Rover, Rover, come, come. And you start yelling at your Rover. Then Rover is going to get panic. is going to start getting anxious, actually, when you do that. Because you're now acting angry, acting strange, acting weird. Now they start panicking and they run away from you. That's because, again, Rover didn't know what calm meant. In your mind, you think that your dog should know by now that what calm means. Calm means come to me. But in their mind, it doesn't mean that yet. Because probably you haven't literally uh, trained your puppy, teach your puppy or your dog that when I say come means you come from wherever you are and sit in front of me. That should be the process. And this process should repeat again thousands of times for the puppy or the dog to register that when I hear my name and I hear the word come, that means I stop whatever I'm doing and turn around and go to my owner and sit in front of it. Have you done that process with your dog thousands of times? Ask yourself that. Have you asked your dog, have you taught your dog to leave whatever it's supposed is doing and turn around and come and sit in front of you? Have you repeat this process thousands of times with your dog or puppy? Yes or no? Obviously, not many dog owners do that. I'm not saying that nobody does it, but there are dog owners who don't do that. Uh, that takes a lot of training to ask a dog to come to you, for instance, especially living and stopping whatever they're doing, whatever fun they're having, playing with other dogs, grabbing a stick, running around, uh, playing with their, their toy, things like that. That fun moment for them to stop and pause and turn around and come to you. It's a lot of process. It's a, it's a, it's a, you're asking your dog too much, first of all. It's a lot, right? It's like me watching my favorite show on TV or on my uh, Netflix, and then my wife says, honey, can you stop watching your favorite TV show and come and help me with this problem that I have, which could be, let's say, not a, you know, life-threatening, but it's minor problem that I have to go help. It's, it's that, like, you know, I'm not going to leave what I'm enjoying now and come and help you, unless it was a really emergency. I would leave my favorite show, right? But to leave a favorite show or in, as I'm eating a, my favorite food or pizza, right? To leave and do something else, it's too much to ask. It's too much commitment to me to for me to leave that and go do something else. Same thing ha applies to dogs. To, in order for them to leave that much important, to leave something that is that much important to them and come to you, it's asking them, first of all, too much. Second of all, it takes a lot of training, a lot of repetitions for a dog to learn what it takes for me to stop what I'm doing and go to the, my owner. Uh, and that needs to be taught to a dog, needs to be trained. Um, and training a dog, to, uh, for instance, to come, 
um, it's a it's a process that is very long and takes a, a, a lot of work. And I have videos on my channels that channel that you can go and watch uh, how to teach your dog to come, for instance. So that is something that you want to be aware of. Um, I see that Tiffany Chen is in the house. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your training tips. Uh, you're welcome. I have a big old cross pug mix. Sometimes, why does my dog stare at me like he's thinking about it before performing commands he knows? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You know, in our mind, we think our dog knows. If you have, <clears throat> if you have, a dog who's giving you a, that body language and it's giving you that form of communication, it's a simple sign that your dog, your beagle, exactly doesn't know what it means. Even though you think that we've done this maybe a hundred times and should know, in our mind, we think he or she should know. but the reality is the dog doesn't know it. It knows somewhat. It doesn't know exactly what it means. So this is why number of, you know, thousand, the number of thousand is very important. I want you to repeat every command perfectly thousands of times with your dog. So what I mean by that is let's say, I want my dog to come to me. Let's stick with that recall command, calm command. Okay, so my dog is over there and I'm saying, Rover, come. And Rover is turning around and staring at me and like, you know, what is this, right? And he's not coming. That's a sim simple signal and sign, first of all, that you know, my dog is questioning, what was that, right? It's like learning something, a new language you know it's familiar, but you don't know exactly what it means, right? You just need a, a little bit of cue or clue to get it to solve it. So that's what, first of all, that is. Now, second of all, um, when we say, for example, to come, when, when a dog hears Rover come, Rover comes right away, that means the dog is exactly sure what calm means in its mind, right? That means this dog has repeated and knows exactly what the sound of the word calm means because they have it has repeated thousands of good times, good repetitions, not bad ones. Not when we say rover calm and rover comes and just takes off or rover takes off, when I say rover come, it takes off. When I say rover come, rover looks at me and then comes and then gets distracted with something else and just does that. These are all bad recalls. These are all bad comes, right? You, you want to have thousands of good results. What that means is rover come, boom, sits. Rover come, looks at you, comes towards you, sits and looks at you. That's a good recall. And you have to have thousands of these good ones in order for the dog to register in his mind what exactly calm means. The, the, the hundreds or thousands of the bad ones that you get before the perfect calm is just the practice, is just pro the process of the dog learning what it actually it means. So all those bad ones that you call your dog and your dog stares at you or, or looks at you and walks away or comes towards you and walks away or comes towards you and gets distracted with something and gets busy with that, these are all bad ones. You have to, but they're still counted as training. You know, you're still training. But you have to get a good, solid calm to you 
which is rover over there, and you say rover come, and rover looks at you, runs towards you, and sits. Thousands of these has to be repeated in order for your dog to say, you know what, I know exactly what come means. I can put two and two together, and I understand exactly what that means. Now, a, a, a bonus tip here, if you want to get a 100% good, solid recall from your dog, have your dog on a short leash, and then after a few months, extend it to long leash, and then expect them to get results. So the reason we put the dog on a long leash is because, or leash in general, is because we want to have uh, a good 100% to make sure that 100% of the dog is going to come to us. There's no if uh, or but. If the dog is going to come to us, but what if the dog sees something? There's, you, we want to avoid all these um, circumstances and make sure that the dog definitely comes to us. So the only way that you can do that is using a leash or a long leash and never also asking your dog to come to you when the dog is off leash. If the dog is off leash uh, and you say, sorrow, um, Rover come, um, Rover has uh, opportunities to make other decisions. I can get distracted. I, I have no idea what it is. I can go and chase the other skull or other dog instead, or uh, I, I can get busy with this toy that I have. So instead of making sure that they come to you, we're giving them an opportunity to, to practice and learn other behaviors that are unwanted, uh, other tasks that we don't want them to do. So this is very important for you when you're training your dog, no matter what, you have them under control, either on a six foot leash or a longer leash, just to make sure that your dog performs exactly what you're asking them to do. And I see that Shay Shay is in the house and Shay Shay is saying, hi Sorrow, hi Shay Shay. My bow mastiff boy, 18 months old, is show it's slow to obey. We've had him four months. He was an outside dog and hadn't bond with any anyone until he came to us. How do we get him to listen to us? Thanks. So first of all, what I want you to understand is when you uh, rescue a dog, when you adopt a dog and you have a new dog in your home, you bring a dog to your home, uh, understand that this dog automatically won't be becoming your dog. It takes for a dog to bond with a human being or any, any individual, depending on the circumstances in previous uh, experiences that they've had, if they had a bad experience or worse, or even maybe some good experiences in the past, uh, it takes them a long time for them to bond with a new member because they, most of the time, this is what I want you to see. I want you to see from a puppy, a dog's point of view. When a puppy is born, when they open their eyes and see the world, the first thing that they see, they start to bond with that thing, right? It could be a cat, it could be a human, it could be a bunny, whatever it is. They will start to bond with that thing. Now, once they're building a bond, once they start building uh, instinctually, they start bonding with that individual, now, most rescue dogs, what happens, they bond with certain things, and after a while, you know, they're, uh, they're dropped off at the shelters or given up. So, they, that bond is broken. And now they're in shelter, and now you go and rescue this puppy or dog and bring it to your life. Because you think that, okay, I, I paid for this puppy, I signed the papers, I brought this puppy to my life, I'm paying for all the food and shelter and all that, so it's my dog. That's from a human's point of view, yes. Uh, you know, logically from human's point of view, yes, it is your dog. But for from 
your puppy and your dog's point of view, you're still nobody. You haven't been uh, able to connect with your puppy or your new individual dog yet. It takes them six months to a year to really bond with a new individual, especially if you have a rescue dog, uh, a dog who has been in a relationship previously. You know what I mean? In, in a, let's put it that way, in, in a relationship. They had a relationship before they broke up and now they have to build a new relationship. You know, it's not easy to build a new relationship, even in humans, when, you know, you know man and woman, when they uh, build a relationship and after a few years or few months, it doesn't work, they break, break, bro break up. Uh, these individuals, they have a hard time still going and, you know, making different relationships. It's just hard uh, because your expectations are different, right? Um, so for the puppy, for your puppy, it's not going to be easy to bond with you. And the reason, uh, no matter what it is, uh, main reason is because it takes time for this dog individually to bond with you. So you have to give time, you have to spend time, you have to pay attention to your puppy or your dog um, for at least six to six months to a year, just investing time in, in interacting, uh, building relationship, building communication. Uh, and the other thing that I want you to understand also and also focus on is uh, don't focus on the story of your dog. So, for example, you're mentioning that he was an outside, outside dog and had a bond with anybody. I want you to erase that from your mind and from your head and don't focus on that. Don't think of that because when you think of that, of those excuses, of those scenarios, of those um, situations, you become a, an individual who's weak with bad and negative experiences. And when you put those negative experiences in your mind, you're automatically transferring those negative energy and negative information to your dog. So it makes you to stop bonding faster because of negative energy, negative information, okay? But if you don't think about the past and always think about that this is new day, a new start, a new dog, new relationship, and focus on what is today and tomorrow. Not even tomorrow. I don't want you to focus on tomorrow. Focus on today. What do we need to do now? What do we need to do today? What? Where do we start now? How do we? How do we build this relationship in a positive form, in a positive structure? And focus on that. Don't think about what happened to the dog. The story of the dog has to be erased. When you, when we humans, we rescue dogs, our task now is to rescue that dog. We don't want to label, label, label that dog as a rescue dog. We want to label that dog as a dog, normal dog. And your task and your job is to erase the past and build a new today and new future. Okay, so focus on those. And again, you know, 18 months old is a still young individual for it to still build uh, a bond and relationship. So take advantage of that and start building training um, sessions every day, focus training session, I would say 15 minutes to half an hour daily training. So what I mean by that is literally physically, you start teaching your new dog, sit, stay, come, sit, stay, come, at least these three commands. And if you need to know what those, how to teach those commands to your dog, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share a list, uh, a video playlist that I want you to watch and work on your dog every day uh, using these commands. You, that's literally, that's what everybody should do. When, when we talk about training, when we say 
training you have to train your dog it it means you put uh, a, a time aside uh, and you start um, individually and focus train your dog for 15 minutes to half an hour a day that will give you an opportunity to connect with your new dog uh, that will give your puppy to learn what you exactly what you want him or her to do um, and start building that communication and connection with your dog uh, so i'm sharing the link to the videos that i want you to watch every day so every day work on for example sit for the first two weeks just work on the sit command and if you see that your dog is learning the sit start adding stay for another two weeks, three weeks, one month. And once you you see that for the, you don't sit and stay after a month or half, your dog knows those things at recall command. So work on sit, stay calm. And there are other videos there, uh, other commands that you can actually start teaching your dog as well. Just go as your dog learns. So first train one command, and if you see that your dog is learned that command, has learned that command, then add another command. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. It may take uh, a week for your dog to learn to sit properly, uh, or it will take uh, a month. Just take your time, focus on training, literally put 15 minutes to half an hour as time aside every day, and just practice with your dog. Practice, practice until your dog starts building that bond and uh, connection with your dog. And the, the reason I suggest 15 minutes, because five minutes is just too too short. 10 minutes is not enough. 15 minutes is ideal. Uh, half an hour is um, maximum. Uh, if you do more than half an hour training with any dog, they will turn off. They will start... Uh, getting tired physically and mentally and they won't uh, listen to you anymore uh, so you start uh, making a negative you're going to have negative effects as they uh, as you're doing your training so focus on this and hopefully you will have a great result within a few months uh, with your new dog and that is great that you have adopted a beagle um, no, the, the bull mastiff boy. That was a bull mastiff boy. Yeah. Uh, so that's great that you have adopted and um, work on that, and you'll see great results. Hello, bug lovers. My name is Saro, and me and Harvey here. are going to teach Hold you on. how to get your dog to sit. Oh, so that was the link for the video that I just shared. So let me uh, give you also one more tip. Why is it that your dog doesn't listen to you? One is because, as I, say, as I said, you, you, they don't know exactly what the command means. That thing that you're saying is, yeah, they're not clear. You have to be clear on teaching the, the dog the command and ask them and make sure that they know exactly what that means. And I explained how, what the process is. Uh, the other thing is because when you're asking your dog to do some, something, you're probably emotional. Most of the time, you're probably angry or you're too soft. So, for example, you probably are saying, go over, come. It's, that is too soft, right? It doesn't have an impact. It doesn't have any energy behind it. Or especially some, most of the time, you know, if your dog asking your dog to come, for example, to listen to you and is not listening to you, get angry. Rover, come, Rover, Rover, get over here, Rover. You do that probably. So you become angry uh, and basically you become emotional. And when you get emotional, your dog uh, understands that, feels that and reacts to your emotion. It's not that it's not listening to you, it's not listening to your command, it's mainly it's because you're emotional. You're either too soft, playful, or you're too angry, scary. So you have to be somewhere in between, somewhere in between of 
uh, those that neutral tone to ask your dog to come. For example, if I want um, somebody to stop doing something, I'm not going to say, hey, stop watching TV or hey, stop watching TV. Those two are going to be giving me negative results. So instead, I'll say, hey, can you stop watching TV? That is more firm, more, <clears throat> more clear of what I want. And um, that will give me better results. If I give a clear, uh, neutral tone of uh, when I'm asking my dog to do something. Let's say you have a puppy and your puppy is biting your hand and chewing on your furniture or whatever and you say over stop stop it no you know it don't don't do it stop it hey you if you do that it's playful so your puppy is going to take that as playful energy and it's going to continue on doing and if you get angry and be aggressive and uh you know push or pull or you know do something that is angry in a way aggressive uh, your puppy is going to, or your dog is going to be uh, scared from you. It's not going to react uh, positively. So therefore, it's going to uh, affect negatively. So therefore, you want to be firm and clear. So instead of uh, saying no or no, right, just say no, nope. a clear, firm no. So if you are in neutral tone, uh, eventually your dog is going to get familiar with that tone and is going to respond to that tone. So these are the reasons why your dog does not listen to you. Your dog or puppy doesn't listen to you. Hopefully this information is going to be giving you some uh, ideas of how to change the way you uh, behave around your dog and change uh, your uh, perspective when it comes to your puppy or your dog. And don't, do not never ever blame your dog for not listening to you. It's not their fault, it's mainly human error, human problem that a dog doesn't listen. Then mainly is because first of all, the dog doesn't know it. And second of all, the human is making a lot of mistakes when it comes to uh, you know, giving those information to the dog. And Shai, uh, Shai, Shai is saying thank you so much for sharing the video. I'm, I'm looking forward to developing the bond with DJ, DJ. Great, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to me. And as always, if you want to become an educated dog lover and have a healthy and happy well-behaved dog, consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the bell icon as well. So you will get notified as soon as I post my next video. Until next time, have fun with your dog.